How would you describe the taste of an oyster? Salty, maybe a bit chewy. I think it's a little bit of both, but that's not a great way to describe the delicate flavours of an oyster. So Aussie oyster farmer Lester Marshall has come to our rescue. This humble farmer has travelled the world researching food branding, thanks to a Nuffield scholarship sponsored by the Fisheries Research and Development Corporation. Now Lester's on a mission to create a language for Aussie seafood, like the way experts describe the flavours of a fine wine. There's just no information here to describe any of the flavours or textures of any of this product. Yep. A winemaker does that. So what we're trying to say is that farmers who have a, a, raw, a raw product okay, can turn it into, instead of just being seafood, yeah. right, just a prawn, it can become a premium branded food uh, which, which people say, I want that brand and, be, and, they, and they need a story that goes with that brand that consumers can get and go, look, I, I, I love it and these are the reasons why I love it. Lester launched the project when he wanted to promote his Coffin Bay oysters and other seafood products from South Australia's magnificent Air Peninsula. Just like wine, different regions of Australia can produce different flavours in the same seafood. Lester wants us all to savour that delicious diversity. We want Australia to become famous for its seafood and so we want all the different regions to come up with a standardised language that this best describes the, the terroir and the, and the, um, the, you know, the flavours from their own specific regions and what makes them unique. To demonstrate, Lester and I try one of his local okay, Coffin Bay oysters. Yep. Now you got to chew it about 10 to 12 times. You'll notice a bit of saltiness straight away on the front of your palate as soon as you, you, you start to eat it. And then you'll notice that uh, there's a flavour in the middle of your palate now. And then after you've finished eating it and you've swallowed it, you end up with a flavour on the back palate, which is a, a lingering aftertaste, which every oyster from different regions will have. Oh, I, can, I can taste can you still that beautiful you still, salt, can you that still sweet taste salt in it. still taste it on the back of your palate? Oh, for sure. It's yeah. there and it's, it's great. And what it does do, it makes you want to pick up another one and have another go. Then we taste a Sydney rock oyster from northern New South Wales. It's not as strong in the salt, the, the no. salty smell, so that would suggest maybe that it's, <clears throat> that it's had a little bit of fresh water through it. Once again, now we're thinking about this, I find that, that the Sydney Rock Oyster's got probably a stronger lingering aftertaste. I would say that someone who's, a, who's right into their oysters would probably like that one. For me, I probably prefer the Coffin Bay Oyster because I like that more subtle, yep. slightly sweeter flavour. Luckily, Lester's not leaving it to amateur eaters like me. This team of trained palates at the University of Queensland will scientifically evaluate every fishy flavour and aroma. Each of the panellists tastes and smells and experiences the texture and the flavour and the colour and all of the sensory attributes of each of the products and they brainstorm all of the words that they think describe the flavour, the aroma, the texture and the aftertaste of each of the ingredients. Once they've come up with the descriptions, Dr Heather Smythe and her team will rate the seafood for the type and intensity of each flavour. The ultimate aim is to create a flavour world full of seafood language so we can all become crayfish connoisseurs, snapper specialists and oyster experts. I think it had quite a salty sea breeze type of aroma with a little bit of greenness like a cucumber. The texture comes straight to mind, the creaminess and the smokiness comes through. I find the liqueur has a very clean, um, delicate taste. It's salty but it's definitely got a watermelon finish to it. This project is about giving that language, toning in and giving accurate and precise descriptions to say to the consumer, this is the flavour and this is why it's worth more. This is why it's different. This is the premium that you're paying. It's not just about consumers learning the language of seafood. Lester also wants to train the palates of Aussie seafood farmers so they can accurately describe the delicate tastes of their product. Basically, they'll become the noses that know.